Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. Today is Booklist Thursday and it's a really fun little Booklist Thursday that we've been doing in the month of October. We've been having some fun with very Halloween-ish, October-ish, creepy-ish themes all month. And so since today is Halloween, happy Halloween everybody, um, we are going to talk about books that have like Halloween buzzwords in the title. So I have quite the stack of them right now, so I may not talk about the synopsis of every single one of them, um, but this was a lot of fun. I actually, when we came up with this idea, I wasn't really sure I was going to find a whole lot, and surprising again, I have a pile of them, but it's fun. So before we get into that, Bookless Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book, thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. And again, today's is Halloween buzzwords. So let's just get started, right? Okay, the first one I have, um, we have Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan. And of course my buzzword is midnight because what is Halloween without a midnight? I mean, that's when the creepiest things happen, right? Um, this one I know centers around a girl, Lydia, who works in the Bright, I Bright Ideas Bookstore. Kind of keeps to herself, she's a little quiet. Until one day, Joey, who is a young, beguiling book frog, don't know what that means, but he kills himself in the bookstore. And so Lydia kind of gets a little rattled by this and is very shocked when Joey kind of leaves her a lot of his things after he died. One of them um, is a number of books, and inside the books he's kind of written a lot of notes that are a little disturbing, but Lydia is kind of coming up with the conclusion that there's some secrets here that she's kind of uncovering and now wants to know some answers to. So sounds a little mysterious, a book about books, all good things, right? Next one I have is Love Letters to the Dead. Of course, my word is dead by Ava Delara. Um, this follows our main character, Laurel, and she is given an assignment in school to write a letter to someone who is deceased. She picks Kurt Cobain because he died young, her sister died young, and by doing that one assignment, it kind of spins her into more, and she starts filling up an entire notebook of letters that are to deceased people, and through that, she kind of comes to the realization of dealing with her sister's death dealing with what the truth is and somehow something happened to her in the process but it basically be becomes her therapy and the way it's written is all these letters they're just all these letters written to all of these famous people so that's very interesting to me i think um first of all and then just that's just how she deals with it so sounds good the next one I have is Ghost Boy by Martin Pistorius and Megan Lloyd Davies. Again, my word is ghost. Um, this follows, I believe it's a nonfiction, I believe it's a true story um, about Martin Pistorius, which of course is the author. And he came home from school one day in 1988 with a sore throat, kind of never went back. And over a year, he degenerated so bad that he became basically a mute quadriplegic. And then one day, he wakes up and he's fine. So, sounds very interesting. Curious to see what exactly happened and what was missed and whatever that was, but here's Ghost Boy. Next book I have is Truth Witch by Susan Denard. This is a, I believe a trilogy, um, but they're all different witches. There's Truth Witch, Wind Witch, and what's the other one? I don't remember. Um, but it's a fantasy book, again, following these, these witches. Each one follows a different specific witch. So, I don't know. I've heard they're good. The next one I have is These Shallow Graves, and my word is graves, by Jennifer Donnelly. And it has a map. I know. Um, so this follows our main character, Jo, and she's beautiful. She's rich. She's about to finish finishing school and be perfectly set up with her husband and lead this wonderful life, but she doesn't want to do that. I believe she wants to be a reporter or a journalist and that's like her passion. So in the midst of kind of getting ready to be done with school, her father is very accidentally killed. He ends up shooting himself while cleaning his revolver. 
and she knows immediately that that it cannot be true because he would never ever do that and so that kind of leads her into this investigative life trying to figure out what exactly happened to her dad right and what a creepy cover too right oh, all all the good october feels the next book i have is little monsters by kara thomas again my halloween buzzword is monsters this follows casey who's kind of the new girl in school she's kind of gotten in with this popular group of girls that she's surprised she's part of but they've quickly become really quick fast friends um and then she i mean they hang out together all the time they're like constantly together um and she finds it really strange she's not invited to like the biggest party of the year that's given by this friends um and she's like this doesn't feel right this doesn't seem like i shouldn't have been invited and was a little hurt by it but then finds out but then finds out that one of the girls, Bailey, which is kind of the one she's been the closest with, never makes it home from the party and things are kind of set up to look like she did something to Bailey. Right. Even though she didn't. Sounds interesting. The next one I have is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo because, well, Shadow and Bone. Halloween buzzwords. Need I say more? I don't think so. The next one I have, again, is we've got Dead Girl Running by Christina Dodd. My buzzword is dead. I'm finding a few of those, that's for sure. Um, I like the back, and this is kind of what has me intrigued. It says, I have three confessions to make. Number one, I've got the scar of a gunshot on my forehead. Number two, I don't remember an entire year of my life. Number three, my name is Kellen Adams, and that's half a lie. Right? What happened? Don't know. We might as well keep up with the theme and go with The Dead Wake by Erica Larson. Um, this follows the sinking of um, the Lusitania. Um, I have read Eric Larson's um, book Devil in the White City. Wasn't a huge fan. I, like, I liked the historic references to um, there's kind of two parts to that story of Devil in a White City. You have the World's Fair and all the details behind that, and I really didn't care much about that. I cared more about the kind of serial killer aspect of it. So I thought, let's give Dead Wake a try, because it's World War II. It is, I do like nonfiction. I liked Eric Larson's writing style. It follows the sinking of Little Titania. So we're gonna give it a whirl, but there's Dead Wake. Next up, I have Salem Falls by Jodi Picoult, and I'm gonna say Salem feels like a very Halloween-y buzzword, just because we tend to um, bring to light the Salem witch trials a little bit more around Halloween time. Um, so this one follows a um, handsome new stranger comes to sleepy New England town of Salem Falls in hopes of bearing his past. Once a teacher at a girls' prep school, Jack was destroyed when a student's crush sparked a powder keg of accusations. Now washing dishes for Addie Peabody at the Do or Diner, he slips quietly into his new routine and Addie finds his, this unassuming man fitting easily inside her heart. But amidst, amid the rustic calm of Salem Falls, a quartet of teenage girls harbors dark secrets and they maliciously target Jack with a shattering allegation. It's Jody. It's going to be controversial. It's going to be fantastic. I just got to find time to read it. I know. Next one I have is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barrent. I mean, the whole title is Halloween buzzwords. Midnight, garden, not really garden, but midnight, good and evil. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I haven't read it yet, but I've heard really great things about the book. And then our last one is Her Every Fear, with fear being my buzzword by Peter Swanson. I just read my first Peter Swanson book not that long ago and really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm pretty excited to pick this up. I should add this to my Halloween pile of books, but it might be a little, a little late. Um, so Kate Pretty was always a bit neurotic, but after an ex-boyfriend kidnapped her and nearly ended her life, her bouts of anxiety began exploding into full-blown panic, panic attacks. When Corbin Dell, a cousin in Boston, suggests the two temporarily swap apartments, Kate agrees, hoping this time away in a new place will help her overcome her past traumas. But at Corbin's grand apartment in Beacon Hills, Kate makes a shocking discovery. 
His next door neighbor, a young woman named Aubrey, has been murdered. And the police question her about Corbin. Dun dun dun, right? Sounds amazing, Peter Swanson. Really, really liked um, his other book. So, there's my Halloween buzzwords for you. Make sure you hop over to Sarah's channel over at Sarah's Nightstand, see what she has. I'll have a link below as far as her Halloween buzzwords. This was super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed our very creepy Halloween spooky theme to this month. And I hope you had some good time, or at least found some time to read a li nice little thriller or creepy book. Get you in the mood, right? Otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic Halloween this evening. Enjoy the candy. Leave comments below. Let's talk about books. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye.